about the forest health problems in our national forests. Catastrophic insect attack and unprecedented wildfire have created a forest emergency. The problems are widespread and touch all areas of our forests, from the high desert ponderosa pine near Mountain Home in Boise to the subalpine fir and lodgepole around Cascade. Our forest is at risk. It is our intent to actively fight this battle by using such tactics as prescribed fire. Prescribed fire saved this drainage. Cottonwood is a living legacy that shows how active forest management can make a difference. But it is the other side of the coin, the thinning process, that you may not know much about. In fact, in many areas of our forest, the trees are so thick that fire is impossible to use as a management tool without killing the majority of the trees. Simply stated, not all stands of trees in our forest are ready for prescribed fire. So thinning our forest is just as important as using prescribed fire. With millions of acres on the Boise National Forest, it may be hard to imagine how to effectively implement an active thinning process. This was a task that Morris Huffman, the Emmett District Ranger and his timber staff faced. As they surveyed the forest on their district, they focused on the southwest side of the district, a process that was made easier by recent events in this area. The Kennedy Creek timber sale had just been completed in the spring, and the Pine Creek prescribed fire operation had been started in April. Those two sites were beginning to develop into areas that would meet the standards of a healthy ecosystem. With that in mind, Tying in other areas along this side of the district, such as the Cotton Pine Timber Sale area and the Second Fork drainage, would provide a defendable front to protect the district against wildfire. As they continued to make their assessments, some common ecological elements emerged. First, it was becoming ever more obvious that the forest was in a poor state of health. Past management strategies left some areas in need of active forest management. Tree stands were thick or outside of their historical range of variability. Simply stated, the ponderosa pine stands were quickly being overcrowded by Douglas fir and regenerating ponderosa pines, creating intense competition among trees for water and nutrients. With this level of competition, promoted by years of drought conditions, crop trees for commercial harvesting have been greatly reduced in size. Growth rings show that Ten rings per inch are common on trees that should be growing at a rate of two or three rings per inch. Thinning was necessary to give the trees a better chance at being healthy and being able to grow to produce a better forest. Another ecological element that emerged was fire. On a historical average, a creeping ground fire had passed through areas on the district every five to fifteen years. With fire suppression efforts, fire had effectively been eliminated. The current fire situation dictated that wildfires burn through the Emmett District in a northeasterly direction, starting in the high desert surroundings and quickly traveling into the trees. Once the fire got into these thick stands of trees, it would quickly become a crowning fire that burns out of control, devastating the landscape and destroying years of investment in crop trees, plantations and regeneration sites. Ensuring that the end product of their thinning operation is a healthy, manageable forest protected from uncharacteristic wildfire, while promoting the ponderosa pine as the dominant species by reducing competition and being able to reintroduce fire into the ecosystem became the short-range goal of their thinning operation. We're still playing catch-up in some of these uh, stands that we're operating in, like this one, and what we're trying to do is go back and remove some of the stems that should have been taken the first time but weren't and now we're back in here doing that and we'll get these stands down to the right number of stems to the acre so that we can have a good manageable stand and then we'll be able to reintroduce fire because fire has been kept out of here because we've had too many stems to the acre but eventually what we're looking at is trying to get those stands over onto a commercial harvest so that we'll only come in here once, get it down to the right number of stems to the acre the first time, and then we can uh, introduce fire into it later and uh, it'll be a good manageable stand. By focusing on preventative and defensive measures, 
It was decided that a shaded fuel break along the southwestern front of the district would prevent a wildfire from becoming a large, uncharacteristic crowning fire. This is the Kennedy Creek timber sale area after a commercial harvesting sale has been completed. As you can see, a fair amount of pre-commercial timber is still in competition with other trees, even after the crop trees were harvested. To reinforce this area of the fuel break, tree marking crews identified stands of trees that were overcrowded. By increasing the spacing between trees, identifying trees that were excess, and leaving a stand with multiple age classes, the marking crews marked trees to be removed or thinned out. A mechanical tree processing head was used to remove the excess trees and stack them in slash piles. The processor has proved to be a versatile tool. It can either process the trees on site or leave the branches and tops attached to be processed at a landing site. This allows the entire tree to be used. This is a time-elapsed shot of the processor head working. As you can see, at first the trees are spaced too close together. As the processor head removes trees, the tree stand gradually opens up, allowing sunlight to reach the forest floor as the tree crowns are separated. Well, this is uh, the type of thing that we've been doing in here is uh, we have a good leaf tree that we have here, and we had two other trees that were excess that were uh, right in here close to this tree, and so we came in and we've cut them. They've been skidded out, and uh, we'll hopefully get them, get them sold. The ones that aren't skidded out either get put in a pile or they get limbed down so that uh, they aren't a, a, a fire hazard. The excess trees are stacked in piles so that a grapple skidder can easily get to them for further processing. Deck material will then be offered for sale as firewood, pole material, paper pulp, small saw timber, and a variety of other uses. A small amount of that material has been purchased by a local sawmill operator, resulting in $2,900 being returned to the district. Hand crews provided by the Southern Idaho Correctional Institute then prune the remaining trees in order to remove ladder fuels. This type of thinning leaves stands with more than just one age class that promotes the diversity of the stand. The result is not just a uniform stand of trees. As you can see, Douglas fir are mixed in with the ponderosa pine. The thinning of this area acted as the anchor point for the fuel break that is intended to help protect the High Valley Guard Station and all the private ranches and homes located in High Valley. The area immediately adjacent to Kennedy Creek was part of the Holbrook wildfire burn of the mid-1960s. Today that area is covered with small ponderosa pines that are a result of the regeneration process. However, this regeneration site came back too crowded. It was common that 1,000 trees per acre were found in this area. Thinning was necessary, and by using the SICI hand crew, this area was thinned and feathered out to the forest boundary to blend in with the Kennedy Creek project. If a wildfire moves through this area now, it is likely to stay on the ground as a low-intensity fire saving the plantation and providing an area for fire suppression crews to control the fire. This makes for a defendable area that will save the regenerating trees as well as protect the Kennedy Creek site. On the other side of Kennedy Creek is the Cotton Pine Timber Sale area. This will be the site of thinning operations in the near future. Just north of Cotton Pine is the Pine Creek Prescribed Fire Site. This area has been logged in the mid-1980s and was ready for fire to be reintroduced. The first stage of reintroducing fire to this area was completed. Fire crews will finish the site in the spring of 1996. To the north of the Pine Creek prescribed fire site is the second fork drainage. Because of the success of using the mechanical head processor in Kennedy Creek and its ability to thin thousands of acres per season, the processor head was moved in to the second fork drainage. This is an area that fire has been kept out of since the mid-1940s and is not yet ready for a commercial harvesting event. With the absence of fire to help thin out this area, tree stands had become overstocked. A thinning prescription was necessary. The intent is to get all of these areas tied in with each other over the next five years so that we have created a shaded fuel break along the entire western side of the district.
From High Valley all the way to the north end of the district, the end result will be a defendable forest with a healthy ecosystem. This is how these sites look today. Our thinning tactics have proved to be environmentally friendly. At most sites that are complete to date, it is difficult to tell that an active management process has taken place. Being friendly to all elements of the ecosystem has proved to be an attainable goal. Riparian areas that required thinning received special handling. Aspen, willows, and plenty of vegetation were left in place in order to ensure the wet area won't dry out. Thinning was accomplished by chainsaw crews. The slash was then removed by hand, eliminating the damage caused by tracked and wheeled equipment. Areas that were disturbed by the processor head and the skitter equipment were left with a small amount of slash on the slopes to help prevent erosion until vegetation naturally reproduces. Another benefit that is a direct result of the thinning operation is improved wildlife habitat. By opening the stands of trees, sunlight is now able to reach the forest floor. This enables vegetation to grow that in turn provides improved feeding areas while leaving the necessary amount of cover to provide security to foraging wildlife. This also improves the vegetation for grazing domestic animals. The dead woody material that is standing in the areas or is on the ground has been left in place. This ensures that snags can be used by birds and other wildlife that need them for security and feeding. By opening the forest, we have also improved access to recreationists. It's simply easier to move through a stand of trees that has been thinned. Monitoring our work is also an important part of the plan. These sites will continue to be studied to ensure that our management strategies best suit the ecosystems. Public involvement is a critical element in helping the public to understand the problems that our forest is facing. We don't really need Working to with that. the Public Affairs Office, really the Emma District has organized field trips to the Kennedy Creek site to show the general public how thinning is beneficial to the forest. Projects uh, like these, they do a lot of good for the whole ecosystem. Uh, we get the trees down to the right number, they grow better. Uh, we have a lot of benefits for the wildlife. We have a lot of benefits for range because we have more uh, plants that are uh, growing on the ground. Everybody really benefits from uh, having this type of project done in the ecosystem. Active forest management, studying landscapes, identifying the ecosystem problems, and implementing site-based treatment. That is how ecosystem management works. Forest thinning and prescribed fire operations like Kennedy Creek, Cotton Pine, and Second Fork Creek are examples of how the Boise National Forest will remain a leader in ecosystem management, ensuring that our forests remain productive today and into the future.